Hello, I'm Patricia, located in Chicago, Illinois, and welcome to my channel, which is about twin flame ascension, twin flames, soulmates, love, and healing what has wounded you. How are you today? So today I want to talk to you about ascension, specifically twin flame ascension, and how confusing this gets, and what to do if you have children, okay? Let me suffice it to say, ascending parents have ascending children. Your children, too, will go through ascension. I'm a parent myself. Now, there are people out there that have no children. They get completely befuddled. And if you have your own child, I'm going to say this to you. And pay attention to what I say. Cut them some slack. Okay, to you, your child may be acting out. It's a cry for help usually. Just like you wished that there was someone or something to tell you what to do when all this stuff started. Well, I'm the person that has this stuff. Okay, with children, it plays out a little bit differently. Number one, they're a child. It doesn't matter how gifted you feel that your child is or if they're expressing spiritual gifts or just gifts in general or insights. They're still a child. They need you to be the parent. They need to know where the edges are, where, you know, you need to establish boundaries sometimes. That's number one. Be a proper parent. Number two, do not neglect. A lot of people get confused about what to do and end up doing nothing or end up getting upset, confused, irate, blaming, hiding, okay? These are not the answers. The child will need help. Number three, systems are insufficient to tell you what is happening with your child and why. Okay? So if you are in ascension yourself, chances are, particularly at the onset of puberty, which can be different time than what you may think it is. Like some people think it's right when you hit your teens at 13. Nope, it can start at age nine. So if you feel that some other system is the job, the place to do it, like the school, the school psychologist, the social worker, another psychologist, these do help. However, it is not the end all be all. That is one cog in the wheel that has to be able to help and assist. I am another person who is here to help and assist, get you answers, and get you actions. The next thing to know is your child is not alone. There are hundreds of children, thousands all over the world, going through very similar things in order to rise up to the level where they need to be, and they need to be able to bypass some of the really negative things from your ancestry. If you're not doing your part, you're failing your child and your child will fail. Now, what do I mean by that? They can wind up being mediocre and not rising to their full potential. They can wind up just kind of floundering with things, feeling misunderstood or worse. Sometimes those children will feel anxious and suicidal because they're not getting the necessary boost up through the proper connections in order to get themselves where they need to be. If you've ever worked with children, you will know that sometimes their emotions are jumble. They, they have jumbled emotions. They can't always speak about what it is. As a parent, as an ascending parent, or what I like to call you, the angelic parent that you are, you need to be able to get your guidance through another level. And that is why the integration of your brand new twin flame body is so crucial. What if you are a single parent? Single parents are sometimes feeling very, very overwhelmed. And they there's a big burden to be self-reliant. And it's just not always possible. Because just having a child, it takes a village. Well, where is that support? And we can't, you know, do the blame and shame. We have to wish for proper support 
And we started seeing some of it with the events of last year. However, it still needs improvement. It, there's still a lot of room for improvement and upgrading. If you are not doing your part, you will not attract the right connections. And it has to happen through your body and it happens through doing things with your brand new twin flame body that you cannot accomplish as a solo person. Your first seven chakras are for you as a solo person. Now, I've talked to a number of people over the years um, where I would say that they haven't exactly abandoned their child, but they're not directly in their children's life simply because of circumstances due to their own uh, ascension. Um, they haven't been able to cope or they've been chased off or they've been considered crazy and other people take over or they've had to leave the situation because of the risk of violence and abuse. And it is even worse in other countries than the United States. How do we do this? You have to, have to, have to focus on the integration of your light body so that you can be the person who does resume while possibly the other parent then goes through their own stuff because they will. As for the child, children themselves are not always intuitive, no matter how many flashes of insight and, you know, why zingers come out of their mouth, as they say, out of the mouth of babes, they may say some real wisdom out of there. You may see them waver between being a 30-year-old and a three-year-old, and then they're an eight-year-old again, their actual age. You will see this because it's like a pendulum doing this. So just imagine how that is inside a, uh, a child where they're like, woo, 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 you know. I mean, come on, they're already making you crazy, and that's just with their day in and day out stuff. And then you add all this other stuff. What if they get sick? What do you then do? What if they have questions for you? What if they have other things that begin to be addressed? So I'm going to give you some ideas here about what I went through. Now, first of all, with my child, it actually started when he was a baby, and I would hold him. And this is a part of my gift that when I touch, I it's not just a psychic impression. It's an entire psyche of what has happened. I knew that he had had a past life where he suffered from polio. But that wasn't the thing. He had had several lives where his legs were so wounded he was crippled. And he wanted nothing more than to be held upright. He couldn't even stand that he had to support him. But he'd lay him down. He was like a little turtle on his back. He'd be like, eh, like mewing. And, eh, eh, eh. and I'd hold him up, peaceful and calm. He could see what was what. Loved it when I carried him around, right? And I saw it in a flash. The wounds, what had happened to him. Several of them, like, <laughs> until what I was able to do was demolish it, get rid of it. Now that was one instance. Another one was he himself went through a phase. Um, this is something that I think a lot of kids do, but with the ascending children, it has a purpose. The purpose is to help them play act out some of their personalities. Well, my son did it with almost like costumes, but they weren't costumes. He went through a phase where he was very studious and he'd wear bow ties, even to school. And the teachers, they all thought he was so cute, but his classmates were like, you know, what planet did he come from? Like, he's just dressing differently. We're wearing SpongeBob and he's wearing a, a shirt and a bow tie, right? Then he went through what I can only call his uh, jazzy man phase where he was, uh, again, very young and dressed literally like a 1930s gangster with um, his outfit into jazz and playing poker. And he was good at the poker. And I was like going, oh my God, like how, like, how is that going to work out as you get older? Are you caring? And then the persona just faded as quickly as it came on. But he needed to process this. This is how he processed it. And I worked with him myself because 
it taught me a lot and I documented it and I got guidance on how to help him to clear his mind of these things, which he could not do as a child and he could not do just my me describing it to him like I can with an adult. An adult already has much more experience and more awareness and vocabulary so that you can do that. With a child, you cannot. It has to work through your body, not as an empath. And that is why your twin flame body is so important. Your twin flame is the other parent, even in absentia. That means if they're not a present part of your life, they're still there etherically. You, if you deny it, you're like shooting yourself in, in your own damn foot. Please don't do that. Okay. So these are some examples of, you know, how, how would these things, you know, play out? And I'm not the only parent to talk about this. In my classes, I have had other parents who have acknowledged this and say, oh, my child does this, my child does that. And then we discuss, what do you do next? How do you help them out? Now, the real kicker is going to be puberty. This is not a puberty like you experienced. It is not a puberty like their grandparents experienced or their great grandparents on and on back through history. It is going to be like just boom, bang, and it will throw you for a loop. They will have cries for help. They will put you on their emotional roller coaster ride, and you'd better be prepared for it. So please join me to get some answers and actionable steps esteemable steps so that you are doing the right thing and not punishing your child for simply, you know, being able to distinguish what is a process and what is truly bad behavior. Of course, we are not to really tolerate bad behavior. What do parents do when they have a child with autism, ADHD? Do we dumb down our kids with an endless supply of meds and drugs ad nauseum on into infinity for the rest of their lives? Or is there a solution? The solution is through the brand new twin flame body, okay? And it is in varying degrees because the starting point is now. It actually started in 2020, but it's able to be integrated now. You will be getting some amazing results. I will say this. My son, he's beautiful. My son is highly intelligent and sensitive. He's a son to be proud of. He has pushed himself, not been pushed by me. I did my part with the grid work, with my body, to alleviate things that would hinder him. He brought his grades up to straight A. He is second in his class, and I'm very proud of it. I don't mind saying it. I want you to be proud of your child and not consider yourself that, like, oh, well, that's your child. Be proud of your child. Don't put your child down. They're still a part of you. There's a part of you that made them a promise and made an agreement with their spirit. It's time to honor that. And it's time for the alleviation of all of the ancestral garbage and the integration of the only part that ever counts in terms of raising everything up properly. Okay. We want them to shine. We want them to have a great life find their love too and not flounder around like some you know honestly some of us yeah we were looking for love in all the wrong places do you really want that for your child do you want them to be uh chip off the old block or the apple doesn't fall far from the tree or do you want them to have an actual new experience because for a lot of the children they've been living in a war zone they have a prep like you know they're at war there's drills that we never had to have. They have the legacy of, you know, different terrorist acts, all kinds. Okay, they see this. They're living with it on a daily basis. But they want to live, too. They want a life that's fun and exciting and not at the extremes at every single point of their lives. And that, too, is something that in order to feel, hey, do we need to have extremes or can we Begin to feel nuances and have real relationships and not just a series of crises and codependencies. If what you want for your child is different than what you're seeing out there, then please work with me. The links are below. Ascending parents have ascending children. 
It's not the other way around. As you rise, they rise. Let's rise up together, shall we? Thank you so much. Bye.